This is your WBZH Daily News Roundup for the Buzz of the North, 910 a.m. in Hayward. Civic Media News, I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Body parts are turning up around Milwaukee County. A human leg was found at a park in Cudahy last week. Another body part was found in Milwaukee a few days later. The family of a missing teenager says it wants answers. Authorities can't confirm a connection, but they have brought in someone for questioning. President Biden says his new student loan forgiveness plan will boost the economy by canceling up to $20,000 of interest for millions of Americans who can prove hardship cases. By freeing millions of Americans from this crushing debt of student debt, it means they can finally get on with their lives instead of being put their lives being put on hold. Biden unveiled the plan in Madison yesterday. Republicans like Congressman Brian Stiles say it does nothing to lower the rising cost of college. The burden needs to be on administrators to control the cost of the educational product in the first place. This is why this program is proposed by the president is so frustrating. It does nothing to solve the underlying problem. Biden says his plan would boost the economy by freeing up millions of Americans burdened by debt. Republicans call the plan a desperate attempt to buy votes. Governor Evers is vetoing a Republican bill that would have let 14- and 15-year-olds in Wisconsin work without getting a state permit or their parents' permission. Evers says putting more kids to work is not a serious solution to Wisconsin's worker shortage. Wisconsin's longest-serving state senator is calling it quits. Republican Rob Coles of Green Bay says he'll retire instead of run for re-election now that his newly redrawn district is more favorable to Democrats. Coles is 73 years old. He was first elected to the Senate in 1987 after four years in the Assembly. Spring planting is in full swing and state troopers are reminding drivers to be safe and share the road. The state patrol says you should scan the road ahead and be ready to slow down when you see slow-moving farm vehicles. State troopers count more than 2,000 crashes involving farm vehicles in Wisconsin in the last five years. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now, here's what you need to know closer to home. For WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. The president of Northland College has revealed some more details about the financial issue the school is facing. According to a Northern News Now report, President Chad Dayton says the biggest factors leading to the school's potential closure are declining enrollment and a loss of endowment funds. The school has seen a 24% decrease in enrollment since 2017 and has been operating with a structural deficit of as much as $5 million each year because of that. The school has raised less than $2 million of the $12 million it needs. Duluth residents attended a city council meeting on Monday to share their disappointment in the failed ceasefire resolution vote. During the public comment section of the meeting, many residents criticized the five councillors who voted against the resolution, with one calling them unhinged in their indefensible position against peace. The main topic for Monday's meeting was the awarding of a contract to a Carleton company to make street repairs in the area, but that decision was postponed to April 22nd. The Duluth Fire Department made a bit of history recently. According to a Northern News Now report, the department has hired the first ever K-9 in its history and the only K-9 working with a fire department in the state of Minnesota. The two-year-old yellow lab named Jack is reportedly trained to sniff out ignitable liquids that can show fire investigators that a particular fire may be a case of arson. Jack has officially been on the job for a little over a week and has investigated three fire scenes with the Duluth Department. A Duluth resident was taken to the hospital following an apartment fire downtown. According to the Duluth Fire Department, crews were dispatched to the downtown fire around 6.30 on Sunday night. They arrived to find the fire on the first floor of the West 3rd Street structure and called a second alarm just in case the high winds caused the fire to spread. Crews rescued the tenant who was still trying to get out and treated him on the scene before he was taken to Ascentia Hospital due to injuries he sustained from the fire. The city of Duluth is hosting public meetings regarding the water service lines in the Lincoln Park and Gary neighborhoods. According to a Fox 21 report, the city is hoping for community input on upcoming projects to replace the lead water service lines in the neighborhoods. The first meeting will be held at the Harrison Community Center at 6 p.m. on Monday night, and the second meeting will be held at the GND Rec Center at 6 p.m. on Tuesday night. The lead pipe replacements will affect nearly 350 homes in the area. 
Memorial Blood Centers has announced a blood emergency as donations begin to run dry. According to healthcare officials, school breaks and weather complications have been major factors in the shortage of donations, in addition to a general decrease in first-time blood donors over the past few years. Officials say the blood type they desperately need is type O negative, the universal donor, which is the most often type used in emergency blood transfusions. Memorial Blood Centers is calling on the community to help. Another business in Duluth's Lincoln Park neighborhood has announced it will be closing. According to a Fox 21 report, Little Nature's on West Superior Street in Lincoln Park has announced it will close next month. The owner of the store and play place for toddlers was reportedly looking for a new owner when she found out her rent would double in 2025, but was unable to find somebody to take on the higher rent prices. It has been located in the Anger Lofts building since October 2021. It will close on May 19th. After a study named Duluth as the loneliest city in Minnesota, organizers held a speed-friending event at a local cafe. According to a Northern News Now report, the Dovetail Cafe and Marketplace played host to the play on speed dating, giving Duluth residents a chance to meet all kinds of new people and get to know their community a little bit better in a short amount of time. Hadrian Demiorbius, the organizer of the event, says the hope is to hold a similar event every month to get more people active in the community. And that's what you need to know. For WBZH News, I'm James Kelly. It's the Bucks and the Celtics. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. This one's been circled on the schedule for months. The Bucks hosting the number one seed in the conference, the Celtics, tonight at Pfizer Forum. The Bucks trying to snap that four-game losing streak at home and overcome injuries, like Chris Middleton having a tooth knocked out Sunday night against the Knicks. Doc Rivers. And Chris, you know, was great to begin in the game. He was absolutely fantastic. I, you just feel bad for him. The guy can't catch a break, you know. What's the odds of you getting your, you know, you're going to a game. Okay, tonight it'll be my tooth getting knocked out. You know, it's just, he's having one of those seasons. It's just tough luck. Baseball, the Brewers taking on the Reds again in Cincinnati after losing the opener last night, 10-8. to Milwaukee committing four errors. You know, there's a, there's a million things we could have done better, um, but it's part of it. It's part of it. You don't always play great defense. This was a draining game, but we battled back, and there was there's a lot to be proud of. That's Brewers manager Pat Murphy. With sports, I'm Mike Clemens. On your entertainment beat, I'm Pete Schwaba. Thanks to whiskey, jazz, dive bars, swanky cars, and black and white, Colin Farrell is channeling his inner Humphrey Bogart in the new series, Sugar. Collider reports that the detective show has elements of film noir throughout. The cast is rounded out by Perry Mason's Matthew Reese and Clive Owen. Sugar is now available to stream on Apple. New episodes drop on Friday nights. Happier Gilmore? Adam Sandler fans will be glad to know there is a sequel in the works. Drew Barrymore spilled the beans, or the tea, or your food of choice on her talk show, saying that Sandler was working on a script for Happy Gilmore 2. According to the New York Post, Barrymore told her studio audience that there is a process and that the process is in the process. Actor Chris McDonald also confirmed as much, saying that Sandler let him have a peek at the first draft of the script to Happy 2. Given Bob Barker's passing, it remains to be seen which elderly game show host Sandler will throw hands with in the sequel. Kristen Wiig joined an exclusive club over the weekend. She is now in the Five Timers Club when it comes to hosting Saturday Night Live. The former SNL cast member was joined by other fellow Five Timers who all wore Five Timer jackets, including Matt Damon, Paul Rudd, and Ryan Gosling. Altogether, there are 25 SNL Five Timers, including Tom Hanks and Bill Murray. Congratulations, Kristen. Sunday night was the last episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm, and creator Larry David, as expected, weighed in on why the show is ending after 12 seasons and 25 years. David said he is too old to be on camera every week and to act the way he does, calling it insane and saying he cannot go into his 80s behaving like that. Fans might disagree with David, who is the real-life inspiration for the George Costanza character on Seinfeld, which he also co-created with Jerry Seinfeld. The famous curmudgeon also admitted to being just a shred sentimental and saying goodbye. Country music artist Beyonce is on a roll. Her album Cowboy Carter is number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Beyonce's album is also number one on the country charts, and that is the first time that has ever happened for a black female artist. Cowboy Carter showcases lots of collaborators with Beyonce, including Willie Nelson, Miley Cyrus, Post Malone, and Dolly Parton. Last week's box office saw a two-time champ in Godzilla x Kong. The new empire pulled in $32 million at the box office over the weekend on almost 4,000 screens nationwide. The Warner Brothers film held off a couple of horror film challengers and Monkey Man, which pulled in $10 million, and The First Omen, which came in at number four with just over $8 million. Ghostbusters' Frozen Empire came in third with $9 million. The strong showing at the box office for Godzilla Kong guarantees many similar films to come.
Thanks a lot, moviegoers. For more showbiz fun, tune in to Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, every night between 7 and 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. It is going to be mostly cloudy with a few sprinkles possible off and on through about midday, and then we will gradually become partly cloudy this afternoon. 56 today, the wind west at 5 to 15. Tonight, clear 36. Tomorrow, partly cloudy, 65 with some late day and nighttime showers. That will continue into Thursday. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 40. That's your WBZH Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at buzzofthenorth.com.